All right, guys, back here on Southeastern 14 with Max Barr. We continue our look at all the SEC basketball transfers this offseason. Vanderbilt fans, you've been asking, when are we going to get to the Commodores? they got to build a, basically an entirely new roster. Uh, and we said we'd get there. It's just going to take some time, and we're going to start with two today. We're not going to address all 46 editions yet. <laughs> uh, but we are going to start with two, and it's going to be the two that came from Virginia Tech, Tyler Nickel. MJ Collins, uh, before we get into our discussion on those guys, say about Bet Online, uh, are your number one source for all your summer sports this season from MLB, uh, golf. They have NHL and NBA playoff stats, plus all the latest stats, news, and scores available to follow your favorite teams. Get the latest odds and lines, including team matchups, player props, and odds on just about every sport out there. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to get in on the action. Bet Online, where the game starts. All right, Max, uh, these two, as we said, uh, were at Virginia Tech last year. And so we've got two teammates coming over. Uh, so oh, yeah. Some ge geographical familiarity for former James Madison and now Vanderbilt head coach Mark Byington. Uh, but uh, initial thoughts from you on Tyler Nickel, who averaged 8.8 .8 points per game last year, uh, played about 24 minutes. Uh, Virginia Tech was 19-15. and 15. You know, the ACC was, was interesting last season, to say the least. Uh, had some... You know, big games, uh, nice outputs. Uh, one in particular, I think he had 24 points against Clemson. That was a January game against them. Had some good games down the stretch. You know, had some other games where, um, you know, struggled a little bit shooting-wise, but um, this is a guy who's going to put up shots from three. I think that's definitely something that, that certainly stands out with him. Uh, what else uh, do you see here with Tyler Nichol joining the Commodores? Well, like I always start, I start with some accolades. Let's see what he's done. And, uh, man, was Tyler Nickel a highly coveted recruit out of high school. He was the Virginia Player of the Year in 2022. Now, we all know how good basketball around D the D.C. area, Virginia area is. So, you know, that's significant. Uh, Four-star, goes to North Carolina, doesn't work out, goes to Vatek. And then now finds himself uh, under Mark Byington here at Bandy. Uh, I honestly, Blake, I think there's not a ton to dive into because he plays his role so specifically so well. It's a pure shooter on the wing, a pure shooter on the wing, 6'7, 220, upperclassman now, body's a little bit more mature. Um, he's played a lot of the four at Virginia Tech. Also a little bit of the three. I think he's more natural at the three. Um, but, you know, take that what you will. Three or four, kind of that wing, stretch the floor, kind of put the ball on the deck. Um, but some of the numbers here that I want to look into, Blake, he's got some great offensive numbers. He really does. Um, bringing up the Ken Palm page here. Look at that O rating. Look at that O rating the past two years. 119 as a freshman in very limited minutes, uh, but this past year still sticks it right up there. Ranks in the top of the ACC. Um, great O rating, stretches the floor, like I said. So moving it a little bit farther down, you get to those three-pointers. Man, man, man. There we go, right there. Top 20 in the ACC in three-pointers on high volume, 38 of 94, 40%. Uh, he doesn't turn the ball over. He doesn't foul. Great shooter from the free throw line. Yeah, I mean, this is this is what he is. This is what he is. A, a pure shooter on the wing that's going to bring you some offensive floor spacing and some, some three-point threats. Well, and keep in mind, we talked about, you know, was one of the reasons James Madison had as much success as they had last year. They could shoot the three. And, you know, they had quite a few games where they're hitting double-digit three-pointers. Uh, specifically, you know, down the stretch and some of that run they had towards the end of the season, like they were hitting, you know, 13, 11, 11, 10, 11. You know, you go up down the season, like they got somewhere they made 16, 17. Yeah. So, again, it's it's understandable why he wants to add someone like this to the mix. And like we said, the thing is, like, we only have a season basically sample size on him because he did mm -hmm. start at North Carolina, you know, didn't really play much that first year, had one game uh, basically against the Citadel. That was an early season blowout win for North Carolina. We just didn't get a lot other than that uh, in terms of getting on the floor at all. Um, and so, yeah, like I think this is one where you kind of go off what you saw last year, which obviously took a big step forward last year. felt like a much better fit uh, for him. And now, again, we see kind of what they're going to be able to do with him. But I think you know, it is kind of – feels pretty predictable on how they're going to use him. I mean, he yeah. is someone that they are going to yeah. try to find as many options as they can, knowing they're going to you know, be a transition 
know, kind of team who get out in spacing. We talked about that when Mark Vikington was hired uh, and the way they you know are going to be able to run lanes and stuff. Like They're going to try to get him some open shots. And I think that's the biggest role he can play on this team is to be able to knock down shots from outside and do that consistently uh, because that's something else with Vanderbilt, right? We talk about some of the struggles in recent years for the program. One of the frustrations for the fan base has been, can we just get back to what we used to do really well and why mm-hmm. we used to be able to close that gap with teams in the SEC and be a top half team every year, basically? We just outshoot teams. And I think he's going to be someone that can certainly play into that. I'm not saying he's Jack Golke level of <laughs> his shot chart. Not saying that, but he does have more than double the three point attempts as two point attempts this past year. He had 148 three point attempts to only 71 twos. Uh, so that gives you any indication of his offensive play style. He, he's going to live around that three point line. Well, unlike Tyler Nickel, MJ Collins did play, has played both of his seasons uh, at Virginia Tech. He, he's played there the past couple of years. Average 25 minutes a game, started 44 out of the. Th- six games he's played in so um, you know a pretty regular starter started 28 of uh, 32 games last year and you know again someone else who you know 7.4 points uh, 2.8 rebounds 2.7 assists I mean the numbers aren't going to just completely you know jump off the page at you but but still here's another guy who seems like he's on the rise uh, and you know there was something like we said about that Virginia Tech duo that really stood out to Mark Byington uh, clearly and now we see if he's someone else uh, who, you know, can really fit into what they're going to try to do here uh, in this new sort of regime, uh, and we see kind of how he plays plays a role in that. Yeah, you're getting a completely different style of player here. Completely different style of player. Physical, explosive. Um, just about a third of his total shots are at the rim. So not even like twos, like at the rim frequency just about a third so he lives at the rim he's, he's aggressive driver downhill um highly recruited very highly recruited a bit more than nickel was uh there was a lot of sec schools that wanted him and they all play the same style the teams that recruited him this was texas a&m mississippi state south carolina those really Bully physical ball. yes that's where I'm going. With Are this. you telling me Mark Byington wants to bring the bully ball to Nashville, Tennessee? Is that what you're telling me? Listen, I don't have any insider information on the level of bully he wants to play, but MJ Collins is a great start here. Great start. Um, and he's he's a capable ball handler as well. He's not just all brute strength. He, he's got a nice assist rate. Listen to this actually year-to-year turnover. I can actually – Bring up his uh, his Ken Palm page real quick if I'm not an idiot with it. There we go. Um, so look at the assist rate and turnover rate uh, from his freshman year to his sophomore year. Incredible. Like I haven't seen a jump like this very often. 9.3 assist rate his freshman year. Jumps up to 16.4. And uh, the turnover rate gets a little bit higher also, but so do the minutes. It's only natural. But that assist rate, I mean, look at that jump. Yeah, that's a that's a maturity jump. That's a, I'm taking care of the ball and not making reckless plays jump, um, you know, which I really like to see. So big jump from freshman to sophomore year for MJ Collins, and he, he ended the year super hot, super hot. Last six games, 14 points per game, 48% from three. Maybe showed a little bit of flash of the, the constant improvement that MJ is going on. Maybe we see a bit more shooting. Who knows? Um, but I really like it, Blake. I really like it. Yeah, these two are like feel like they are kind of complementary because you have one who's again, I think how they're gonna use him will just be, hey, let's try to find as many open spots on the perimeter for this guy to take shots we can. But then Collins is kind of the guy where, like you said, he's gonna be the one that sort of explodes and goes towards the rim to open up those kind of shots for Tyler Nickel on the outside. And and that's the thing, like you're pulling up the depth chart here for Vanderbilt. Like we haven't gotten to Grant Huffman, we haven't gotten to Jason Edwards yet. Um, we'll get there. It, We'll get there. We we will. Like we said, we'll get everybody. But, yeah, like, this is where, like, it's going to be interesting to see how all these pieces fit together, and that's Mm -hmm. why we talk about some of these guys in separate videos. I think once we actually talk about every single one of these guys as we go through this this offseason, and we come back around and sort of form our opinion on what Vanderbilt's going to could be next season, it's going to be interesting because, like, I'm curious to see what our – how our opinions change from now maybe to what we think about them a month from now 
when we really go through each of these guys and figure out how they're going to be able to complement. But like we said, these are just two that we're combining together because they did both come for Virginia Tech. Um, yep. But two different players, I think that's the, the best part, as you mentioned, uh, and they're going to be able to bring a little bit something different to the table here. The Hokie Boys. The Hokie Boys. That's what I'm dubbing them. The Hokie Boys. Yeah, I mean, you saw there on the depth chart, you know, no clue how it's going to shake out, but – you have MJ Collin, who's bringing you physicality and explosiveness to that like two guard spot, and then Tyler Nickel. What you see is what you get. Lights out shooter, spread the floor. Uh, yeah, I like it. All right. Well, you heard it here first. MJ Collins, first team all bully ball preseason. Max, Barnes. we're gonna have to talk to the committee. We'll have to talk to the committee. He's gonna remember. In order to make the bully ball team, your percentages need to go down. Uh, yes, especially from the free throw line and everywhere else. Like that's mm. that's an important requisite. Yeah. But Cam Matthews, your spot may be safe for now. Um, He's preseason ultimate, player of the year. Preseason player of the year. Preseason player of the year. Uh, but yes, if you want to learn more about bully ball, you can subscribe to Southeastern fourteen because uh, it's not a bad thing. It's actually one of the greatest things ever when we talk about bully ball here at Southeastern fourteen. And we'll talk about like we said, every single Vanderbilt transfer, every yep. single SEC basketball transfer. We will get to them all. I know we're not going in a, a perfect order, but there is a reason for our madness, and we will continue to go through all these players. We have an entire offseason to do it, and so yep. we'll talk about them. Here at Southeastern 14, check out all of our other stuff here on the channel, SEC Football Baseball as well. So uh, we've got it all covered, and we appreciate you guys watching as always. Hit that subscribe button on your way out, and we'll talk to you again here soon at Southeastern 14.